What's up, everybody? And welcome to day nine of Tales from a Gear Addict. Quick thoughts. Uh, today, I've got a few things I want to go over. Just a few things that have been on my mind. Uh, one, the big topic of collaboration and how we can all use more of it in our lives. And I don't know, just a funny story I I came upon um, a few years ago at NAM. Ran into Thomas Pridgen, and I'm going to title this story "How I Taught Thomas Pridgen to Gravity Blast." Uh, yeah, it is as funny as it sounds. But collaboration, yeah, man, the it's it's kind of a big deal, right? It's, as musicians, we always want to share our love of music, whether it be with people who play instruments or people who just listen to music. We run into those people plenty, right? They, they don't really know the physicality or the technicality behind playing the music, but they sure do enjoy it, and that's totally cool, too. And in the th spirit of collaboration, right, that's always fun to just talk about these things with other people where you're as a musician right you, you play these shows at different venues you meet different people and it's it's always a fun time but these people are like oh you know have you played the casbah right or have you played house of blues big venues or small i mean the shea cafe in san diego right these venues that people know and love but are aren't musicians they just like going to see shows right and it's always fun trying to talk to these people about the fun instances you have at these venues. And like, oh, I've played the Casbah a few times, you know, with a couple different bands, this, that, and the other. And oh, it's, oh, I saw this person there. Oh, I met so-and-so there. And it's uh, always fun because I think a lot of people love behind-the-scenes information. I mean, I do. I'm just a little nosy maybe. But having behind-the-scenes, being able to, you know, bring them into the world they're not privy to as just people who listen to music is, is a fun way to do things. But collaboration it's it's something i think is in the lifeblood of music really because i mean every every re interaction we have as a musician with other musicians is collaborative right we're always trying to say hey i thought of this great riff or i thought of this melody oh what are you writing oh, let me see you know how this how does that sound and in bands it's one giant collaboration right so when you're working parts out when you're writing songs and you're putting the stage show together it's all collaborative i mean that you can't really do that stuff by yourself well i mean I was I saw an article about Ghost, the band Ghost today, and I think um, Tobias Forge kind of is that band, but that's kind of a diamond in the rough. It's really not uh, something that happens too often, and especially a magnitude that Ghost is. Um, you just don't hear about it that often. But he still has to collaborate with all the nameless ghouls and ghoulettes as they have now, and everybody's got to learn the parts, and you know they add to the stage show and they add to, to the music and stuff. So it's not 100% one way, but. It's, it seems like it's pretty pretty close. But yeah, the it's cool. I remember working at Apple um, for a few years that I did, and the they have a very, very, very collaborative kind of ethos. It's actually like built into the way they, they um, train their employees and the way they treat their employees. It's all very collaborative, right? The, it's not just we're management, we tell you what to do. And I met a really bunch of unique people there that I'll never forget as long as I live in a, uh, luckily I'm still, you know, in touch and good friends with a few of them, but just a couple of shout outs. I mean, uh, Devin Babcock, man, you rule Dev love as he's going by nowadays that always wanted to jam and hang out. And he's doing a lot of big things right now and he's collabing with everybody. So a shout out to that guy. Mowgli Casillas, miss that guy. He's a to like the vintage drums, the vintage guitars and Technics turntables and vintage drum machines and stuff like that and always making really cool stuff with those and he's a photographer an amazing photographer does film you know 35 millimeter and stuff and always working with different people and one of my good friends still Robbie Conrad uh, shout out to you homeboy uh, we play it we played at a few different churches together, honestly, out, on and off, and always love hanging with the guy. But we're always collaborating, right? So he's the he's a worship leader, and I'm just the drummer. But you know, we collaborate and you know make new renditions of songs and edit parts and make things a little more interesting to actually just experience for everyone listening. So that's always been exciting. But really getting to collaborate with these people at some point musically was was the reason, you know, at some point was the reason we were hanging out, right? Outside of work, outside of your, your nine to five job, you, you find these things to, to take up your time and collaborating with people like that is, is an awesome way to do things. But yeah, I don't know. It's uh, super interesting. So I guess collaboration, whenever you find yourself bored of just playing by yourself, which, hey, there's nothing wrong with playing by yourself. Honestly, I, I do that quite a bit. I play a lot of guitar in my room. Uh, write a lot of program drums. I do a lot of, you know, just organizing, doing this, you know, hanging out, talking to you guys. That's all by myself. But 
the end goal, right, with this podcast especially, it was just to collaborate with friends and get some cool guests to talk to and hear people's stories and talk about gear and see how people use them. I mean, honestly, look at this. Just pick these up. These are the Creative Press, Creative Percussion, sorry, uh, Hex Stacks. These things are super cool. Hand-hammered, heat-treated metal, right? They recommend stacks of three, but I got two, so I'm going to pick up another one soon. But you can put them tighter, looser, and... Right? That's a stack. I mean, they're cool. Handmade in New Hampshire, which is super rad. Uh, I love supporting small businesses, and these sound great. So if you check these out, I'll link them in the, the bio here, or the show notes, so you can actually go check them out. They're, they're really cool. So these are just another collaboration between two guys that wanted to make some cool stuff, right? They made these really cool instruments and accessories for us to go check out on the drums. So that's really fun. But yeah, I mean, at some point, we all want to collaborate with other people. So Please, 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 if you ever get a chance to say, hey, let's go jam, go jam. It's, it's always worth it. But yeah, collaboration. That's, that's what's, what I want to talk about today. And as well, Thomas Pridgen. That guy, if you guys don't know him, he's a drummer phenom. He's been uh, amazing since a kid. There's honestly this, this modern drummer solo he did um, when he was like 11 or 10 or something crazy young. Um, and... He's just been a, an amazing drummer ever since, and it was really rad. But uh, you'll run into him at NAM, right, the National Association of Music Merchants, uh, every year in San Diego and Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we go to Winter NAM here in California, so that's in San, uh, Anaheim. And a few years ago, um, I mean, honestly, uh, it's, it's crazy top, crazy stuff, right? You just run around, and you're talking to everybody, and there's millions of people there. Not millions, but like 150,000 people there. It's pretty nuts. And you're running around and seeing all the new offerings from all your favorite companies, seeing new offerings from new companies. Um, and I actually found myself at this booth of a, a snare drum company that had just started up. And I didn't know who they were, but they have this patented edge lock system. Um, I will say it looks an awful lot like the edge system from DW, but the way he's done it, um, it's actually a little bit different. So it's a, a wood, metal, wood combination or vice versa, um, metal, wood, metal. And these things sound amazing. Uh, Juan, what was it Juan Carlito Mendoza? That guy plays those. Um, so a guy named Cooper Akutin is the, the owner and maker of these drums. And he's put out a lot of cool stuff over the last few years. And so exciting to see him uh, do his thing with Ron Danette and all those, those guys over there and make some cool stuff. So I found myself at the D Akutin booth just testing out some snare drums I'd seen. And I mean, boy, like I said, they sounded good. So I'm doing some stuff, playing some snares, some roughs, some just rudiments, seeing how the drum sounds. And up strolls Thomas Pridgen in his leather jackets and super sweet suicidal, was it suicidal tendencies hat? I think he was playing around with them or for them or something like that. And he was just coming up right next to me, just tapping on the drums. I'm like, is that really Thomas Pridgen? I'm like, hey, what's up, man? He's like, hey, what's up, bro? And uh, at that moment in time, I was doing a gravity blast, uh, literally as he was walking up. And so for you guys who don't know, essentially uh, gravity blasts are when you get the rim of a snare drum, you use a, a fulcrum or a pivot point between your, your stick and the rim to make this kind of uh, like a, a, I don't know what you call it, like a seesaw, like a da 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 da. You go up and down like this, right? And so you, you use pressure to essentially do this type of, you know, straight kind of, uh, know what I mean? So just straight eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and you can you can blast beat really quickly like that, especially when you're you know these extreme death metal guys like George Coleus and uh, all these other guys, um, John Longstreth of Origin. Ever, not everybody uses the gravity blast, but more for like grind core, if you will. But whatever. So I was doing that, and he pulls up. He's like, "Hey, bro, show me how to do that." I was like, "What? You don't know how to do that?" He's like, "No, show me." So as best I could, you know, what can you teach a guy that is as of a magnitude like Thomas Pridgen? I, I thought nothing, but. I guess I was wrong. So we ended up doing this cool thing where we go back and forth, just kind of trying to show them like, no, 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 it's like this. Oh, you got to adjust here. You, know, you got to hit the rim and the, the head at the same time. And we're talking back and forth. And wouldn't you know, within literally like two minutes, this guy has perfect gravity blast at like 200 BPM, just brrr, like insane. And I'm like, dude, I, I was like, you're sure you didn't know how to do that beforehand? He's like, no, I've never heard of it. So silly that... He just, I, mean, I just, I guess he would never have a reason to, right? He's not in grindcore, doesn't do extreme metal stuff, but he's got chops. He can use them. But 
Yeah, it was just a funny story. So we ended up linking up a little bit later. It's got a picture together. And what's funny is we ran into each other again at NAM this last this last uh, January. I don't think he remembered me, but I, I bumped him and I was like, hey, Thomas, what's up, bro? And he's like, hey, you good? And we were just like, we're rushing out because the, they turned the lights off and everyone's getting out. But it was good seeing the guy. I mean, he's, he's doing fantastic things. He's drummed for... Oh my gosh, who is he drum for? Uh, Eros Ramazzotti, I think is the guy's name. It's an Italian like pop rock star. And he's drummed for, since then, um, oh my gosh, who else? Eros, he's drummed for a few other people, some some big names and stuff like that. So he's been doing some really cool things. So shout out to Thomas Pridgen, man. Hope, hope you're doing well. Awesome. Glad I was able to <laughs> teach you how to gravity blast all those years ago. But yeah, guys. All right. Well, it's the first time I'm actually doing this in video for the quick thoughts. So please, please, please. Uh, once I start the YouTube channel here in a second, uh, I'll post this. I'll post it on Spotify. Um, we're almost on Apple Podcasts. So please, please, please follow. Give us a share. Give us a like. Um, we're trying to grow this channel, doing some cool things. And uh, yeah. So all right. Well, until next time, have a great day and I'll see you guys later. Peace.